Hey, Doug Walker here. I just saw The Nun, and uh, before I go into it, I should probably tell you uh, my thoughts on the other Conjuring movies. This is a prequel uh, to one of them, a the second one, I think. Uh, there's so many of these now. Uh, so, first film, I didn't like. I'm one of those assholes that didn't like it. I thought it was boring, I thought it was dumb. Based on a true story, my ass. Uh, I thought the scares were predictable. The only thing I thought was good was... I like that. Uh, but everything else I thought was stupid and forgettable and, and just really lame. Never saw the second one. Uh, though after the opening they showed in this one, that showed a few clips from it, uh, now, now I'm a little interested, so I might want to check that out. I never saw Annabelle. I saw it was shit. I heard it was shit. But uh, I did see Annabelle creation, and I like that. Uh... I completely forgot about it after I saw it, but while I was watching it, I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, so now we have The Nun, and it's kind of like Annabelle Creation, uh, <clears throat> where while I was watching it, I was legitimately enjoying it. I liked the atmosphere, I liked the characters, um, I thought it was, uh, it, visually it was great. This is kind of like the old school, uh, you know, universal monster films. Where there's a lot of smoke and fog on the ground. There's a lot of cemeteries and tombstones and, and these gothic buildings and churches and stuff. And I love all that. I absolutely love that. And I don't see that much in movies, in horror films. Uh, they're mostly like... Well, The Conjuring, they're mostly like just these scary dark houses and they look very bland and just things are peeling and just jump scares and, and, and very dull. Um, but uh, this one had a real visual eye. It had, for the most part, likable characters. Uh, it's pretty much about, um, there's a suicide uh, at this church back in the uh, 1950s and I think it was Romania, I think? Uh, and they send in a priest from the Vatican. Uh, there's a really great line where he says, you look like you don't trust me. And he's like, well, it's the Vatican. It's, that's a great line. Um, but uh, so they send him and they send this nun or nun in training uh, who is supposed to be... Actually, why did they send her? <laughs> oh, cause I guess she got these visions uh, sometimes. So they think that might help. So it's like a psychic nun or something. It's... The story's pretty ridiculous. So they go out there and they come across this guy who's gonna be the guide. He's he's very much like the Brendan Fraser character from the newer, or I guess they're not new anymore, but from the Mummy movies, uh, except a lot more likable. Uh, and he's called Frenchie, and he takes him there, and it's like all those traditional setups of like these old Universal movies where they're like, they got the little cart with the horse, and there's the giant building on the, you know, on the hill and everything, and the fog, and I, I love this stuff. This is just 100% up my alley. Um, and it, it takes its time a little bit, too. It's not something where there's a lot of forced humor or a lot of, uh, I don't know, just shoved-in-your-face dialogue. It's actually really kind of taking its time and letting the atmosphere kind of sit. There's not a lot of... There's not a lot of fake outs, like, you know, someone just says, Oh, it's just me, or, ah, cat, you know, nothing like that. Uh, so that's also really nice. Um, and then, obviously, the stuff starts to happen. They're, they're in this church, or Hogwarts, it looks like, honestly. And uh, they're, all these nuns are popping up. And then they're disappearing, and they're trying to figure out why. Uh, this one dude at one point is, like, buried alive, and uh, and the nun has to go and get him out and everything. So, I mean, so all these crazy things are happening, and uh, the, for the most part, it... It works fine for what this is, except for one major problem. I mean, there's stuff like, the story is dumb, but I mean, like, everybody knows that going in. It's not insultingly dumb, it's just your run-of-the-mill dumb. It's, you know, everyday average horror film dumb. But there is one big problem. Uh, it is not scary at all. I think I can think of two scenes that legit got kind of a creep value, uh... It kind of a creep out of me. One is when the guy, he, he's going through the um, uh, cemetery, and for a split second, his light flashes behind. You see, like, this little boy looking behind this tombstone. He flashes back, and it's not there. And it's so quick that it, you kind of, you're not even sure if you saw it. Like, that's one of the scenes where it's like, I like to go back and pause and look at that and say, yeah, what did I see there? I, I like stuff like that. Um, and uh, and there's another scene where, like, this nun, she's got a sheet over her, and, and she's, you know, dead, and the nun's about to say a prayer, and, and something happens that just caught me by surprise. I'm like, ooh, that was a good, that was a good jump scare. Um, everything else, it's, they're not 
bad. They're not, like I said, they're not like insultingly bad or come on, you know, that's, that was so lame because I think we've all seen horror films that do that. Uh, but these, these tricks are becoming very, very standard now. There's something in the background. Camera turns this way when it comes back, somebody's gonna be behind them and the person's slowly gonna turn around, but that's not gonna do something. Something from the right is gonna do something or something from, you know, in front or behind, you know, it's, it's never where they're making it look like it's gonna be. It's gonna be from the opposite side. And it's becoming very, very standard. Uh, now with that said, I much rather have that than something like just a slasher film where like somebody's there and just kills him and oh no, and that's, very, very boring to me. Uh, unless, again, you do, like, something creative, like Happy Death Day or something like that. You know, you know was creative with that idea. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's one of those things where there is kind of, like, it's okay build-up. It's okay kind of creepiness. And, and the visuals in this are very nice. You know, it's kind of like, especially in the climax. The climax has a lot of, uh, I can only describe them as, like, the hellfire robed people. It's like the hellfire robed people just as nuns, uh, you know, where you don't see the faces. And there's one thing, you know, watch if you see this movie, uh, that this fire rises up, you're not supposed to see their faces. And one of them, you can clearly see, like, it's just wearing one of those black masks. We can kind of see the eyes and the nose outline. I was just like, they, the digital artist missed that because you know that wasn't intentional. Um, how do I put it? The, the, creepiness of this is kind of like how Lord of the Rings is creepy. You know, like the ring race, or when Frodo falls in that uh, swamp of the dead, whatever. And so it's that kind of imagery. So if that scares you, this will scare you. Uh, but it's the same kind of idea. I almost feel like this thing takes place in like, you know, Mordor or something like that. Like it just kind of like the cinematography is kind of like that. And the colors are very much like that. And the monsters and creatures are very much like that. Um, and the plot is essentially, I, I, I like calling this Demon Nun Night, because they really take a lot from Demon Night. Uh, there's this plot about, like, this holy Easter egg that holds, like, you know, the blood of Christ, and only this can stop, you know, the evil forces from coming up and, and taking over the world, and... It does have a climax where somebody spits in somebody's face with the blood. I mean, it's something where it's it, it's not giving anything away. I mean, you can it, it gets pretty pretty obvious. Uh, but but it's one of those movies too where it's like the the main bad nun, you know, the one you see in the posters and everything, kind of looks like a Batman villain near the end. I mean, it starts to look pretty goofy, and uh, like. It, you know, she's trying to possess, you know, this other person, and, you know, the other person has the Easter egg, you know, around her, her neck, and you think as soon as she's, like, got this body, as soon as she's in control, like, she would just throw that thing, she would just destroy her again, but it's like, no, she's got to go and, like, take care of this guy who she can easily defeat, and, of course, he uses that to the advantage, it, it, it kind of, it turns into kind of the mummy movies, <laughs> but, but, like, the opening of the mummy movies, not the later half, where it's like, you know, a, 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 an even more silly Evil Dead. Um, so, it, it is dumb, uh, but it's not insultingly dumb. Uh, it visually looks great. The, at least, the, at least the two main characters, uh, uh, the nun in training and this Frenchie guy, are really likable, and they're sort of what carry me through. The Frenchie disappears throughout a good chunk of it. Uh, the other guy, the other main character is this priest, and he is super boring, and I don't know if it's his performance or the way he's written, they give him this backstory about this boy he exercised, and it just, unless I missed something, it didn't seem like it went anywhere, and it just seemed like, well, we just need some other creepy visuals outside of just these damn nuns, uh, and it, and it's not scary, and it doesn't really tell me anything about him, so anything with him was pretty dull, but... Everything else, it's a very run-of-the-mill, scary movie, but I think it delivers for the most part what you're gonna be looking for. I think some people might be let down that the scares are not that great, or you're just, you're expecting them too much now. Um, because the crowd I saw with, I saw with a crowd that, like, kind of the crowd you want to see this with, where they talk 
through the movie, and I I usually don't like that, but in some films it's okay. It depends on the film, and it depends on the people. Uh, and this was the right film, and this, these were the right people. I mean, these were the people that are watching the, the trailer for the new Halloween movie, and as soon as, like, you see Michael Myers, you know, coming up behind this woman, these, these, this family behind me, it's just like, get her! Get her! Just like, you know, get that bitch! Oh, yeah, oh, we got that bitch. Yeah, I got that bitch. I knew it was gonna get that bitch. And it's like... I loved listening to these people, and they kind of knew when to be quiet during the quieter moments and when to just do the, you know, oh shit, hell no, like that kind of stuff. So every once in a while when something would appear behind the main character, you know, they'd just be, oh shit, Jesus God, you know, like there'd be something like that. But, uh, but there wasn't a lot of, ah, like when the thing actually came out, and showed its scary face or attacked whatever, there was not a lot of screaming. There was not a lot of, ah, you know, jumping uh, in there. And like I said, I think we're just kind of becoming a little bit more used to it. Um, and this is a movie designed to get that reaction. It wants you to jump, it wants you to scream, and it wants you to do it not at the fake-out moment. I, I, I can't really remember any fake-out moments, which I'm very thankful for. Um... But, yeah, I don't know, maybe they just needed some even scarier uh, creatures or nuns or demons or something uh, to be going after them, or maybe just that we need something different than the things behind them, and it's getting closer, and the person slowly turns, and then something from the other end attacks, you know. It's that's just getting old. Uh, but, but I will say this, uh, early on, I saw, I saw this movie with my wife, and when... In the end, the beginning particularly, there's a really great setup. Some of these setups are good, where you know that this nun hanged herself, and this guy's French guy found her. So he's taking them to the nun uh, uh, that killed herself, and when he opens the door, there she, you know, she's sitting up there, with a dead body and everything, and, and they're gonna go inspect, and he says, uh, "I should let you know that is not how I left her. I left her laying down." And, like, nobody else is there. And it's like, that. that's a wonderful setup. So as soon as this guy's getting closer to the nun, you know, and, you know, everyone's like that. And he gets close, and, you again, you know this setup. Here's, here's the nun. And somebody over here says something, and he turns and says, Please, I know what I'm doing. And my wife just went, ah! Like that, like squeezing my hand, like, here it comes. And it didn't happen. And there's a couple moments like that where they're making it look like we're gonna do that shtick, and then they don't. And that gave me a lot of hope, because at first I'm like, oh, all right, so, so you are gonna do something a little different, but then they just kinda, they do the stuff that every other horror film right now is doing, you know? So it's not something where it's like this is super tired and super just, you know, decades of this going on. I mean, this is like the past maybe, six, seven years of this, like, kind of becoming standard. Um, this is stuff where, I mean, a couple of decades ago, we said we wish horror films would do this. Now they're all doing this. Uh, so, which is tricky, because then you have to come up with different things and different ways to get scared. So, so I get, it's tough. Um, but that's probably the biggest problem with this film. Everything else in terms of, like, a compelling story and, and, and things like that, I mean, it's you know you're not going to get that. I mean, these Conjuring movies are stupid, but if, if they can be done, you know, just to get a few scares and you like the characters and, and you're with them as you're getting through this stuff, I think that's what people are looking for. I think that's why Annabelle Creation worked okay. But again, I, I it's hard to remember anything about it. I just remember I liked it while I was watching it. It had some good scares and then I'm just like, but if you're to tell me name three or four scares in that movie, I couldn't. Uh, where with this one, at least I remember the atmosphere a lot. I remember the environment, and I'll remember these characters. Uh, uh, the, these were uh, the two main ones, anyway. Uh, were, were really, really good characters, and I enjoyed them, and I wanted to see them uh, get out alive. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel like people going to see this film know what they're gonna go see, and they'll probably get what they're looking for. I think just the scares for this kind of film, it, it could have been stronger. That there, it, Something needs to be upped uh, if these films are gonna keep going. I mean, I mean, something else needs to, there needs to be a different way, even if they're jump scares, and I usually don't like jump scares, but like I said, we, we've gotten a little better at them 
in a sense. It's like they're still cheap, but we've got a little bit more creative with them. You know, uh, uh, It, the film version of It, had a lot of jump scares, but but they were creative. There, there was a creativity to them. I like that they're doing that, uh, but this feels like that creativity is really losing steam, and I'd like to see them try something different. Um, you know, just some something new with it. I, I don't know. Um, I will also say, because I think The Nun uh, is in The Conjuring 2, I don't remember when The Conjuring 1, and they made a connection to The Conjuring 2, uh, I don't know, at the end, they do make a connection to it, I can tell this is Floyd you from the first Conjuring or the second one, um, and I don't know if it's like, what? That destroys everything we knew about that film? I don't know. It's like, there is a connection. I know it's a slight connection, uh, but I don't know if it ruins anything. I don't know if... I don't know how seriously people take the mythos of this. Because it's all a true story, guys! Um, but, uh, you're not gonna find out much about The Nun, either. This is a prequel, and you don't know shit about this monster. <laughs> Which is a shame, because it's a cool idea. Ever, ever since I saw that nun at the end of Vertigo, there's always, I've always been like, why isn't there a creepy nun movie? And finally we got one. Um, and, and sometimes th they do look creepy, but, uh, yeah, like I said, they, they kind of look more like Batman villains. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I think just because these tricks have been done so many times and we're just so used to them, but, uh, but like I said, if you're just looking for if you want to see this film, if you look at the trailers and say, I want to see this film, um, you know, you're not going to get anything terrifying, but you'll get a, a totally okay popcorn-eating jump scare movie, you know, it, it, which has some good characters, some uh, nice visuals, like it's a great atmosphere with, uh, uh, with, with like the cemeteries and the landscapes and the, the hills and mountains and stuff like that, uh, and the architecture, very gothic. Uh, I love that stuff. If that's something you're looking for, you're gonna love the atmosphere in this. Uh, but it, it's nothing special. Uh, it's I think it's anyone that goes see this will, for the most part, get what they're looking for. Uh, and if I think it goes without saying, if you're looking for like a high end, good storytelling, scary film that's gonna last years and years, this isn't it. This is just sit down, eat your popcorn, go ah, and that's it. <laughs> so if that's what you're looking for. You it, it'll totally fulfill what it'll totally fulfill that so uh that's about it and i shall see you next time take care